Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining me today as we talk about the CLS Indic programs. Um, I think we're supposed to have 30 plus attendees sign up, so I'm going to wait just another two minutes before we get started. Sarah, can I just check? Can you see my screen okay? Yep, you're perfect. Great. So once again, um, we'll just be starting in about two minutes. I think a few people are still joining in, but they can um, they can ask any follow-up questions they might have. Hello and welcome everyone uh, to this language-specific information center for the information session for the CLS Indic programs. My name is Jay Forrester, and I am the program officer for Bangla, Hindi, Punjabi, and Urdu at CLS. And I'm joined today by a CLS alum from the Urdu program, Sarah Stackhouse. Hi everyone, yeah, my name is Sarah um, and I currently live in Wisconsin. So I'm a student at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College, but I also work in higher education as well too. So I'm happy and grateful that you guys could join with us today. And I look forward to talking with you just about the CLS program and then specifically for the INDIC programs as well. So in today's presentation, we're gonna start with an overview of the CLS program, including some more specifics detailing our INDIC programs. Then we're going to hear from Sarah about her experiences, and at the end, um, we'll answer any questions that you might have about CLS, about the application process. We'll also answer questions that are in the Q&A box here in Zoom. Um, so you're welcome to add your questions in there at any time or even into the chat, and then we'll answer those that aren't addressed in our presentation once we're through our slides. So the CLS program is a fully funded study abroad opportunity for the summer. It supports U.S. students in all fields of study to learn what the U.S. Department of State refers to as critical languages. Bangla, Hindi, Punjabi, and Urdu are four of the 15 languages offered through the CLS program. Probably the most exciting thing about the CLS program is that it's fully funded by the U.S. government. The program co covers the cost of domestic travel for each participant uh, from their home uh, in the U.S. to Washington, D.C. for a pre-departure orientation as well as a round trip international travel to your program site. Uh, the program also covers the applicable visa fees as well as the cost of tuition, room and board, cultural excursions and activities that you would have in the host country. Alumni of the program receive undergraduate credit through Bryn Mawr College, as well as a certified ACTFL OPI test score and um, a certificate to verify their language process. Now, a lot of students ask why an Indic language? But if you're looking for a language that offers access to a broad variety of people and cultures, then learning Bangla, Hindi, Punjabi, or Urdu might just be what you're looking for. Bangla is spoken in Northeast India and Bangladesh by over 200 million speakers, uh, making it the sixth most widely spoken language uh, in terms of number of native speakers in the world. It's linguistically related to Sanskrit and has a rich history as a literary language. Hindi has over half a billion speakers, making it the second most widely spoken language in the world and the official language of India, which is the second, the world's second largest populous country. 
Punjabi is widely spoken, uh, the most widely spoken language in Pakistan, has over 125 million native speakers all over the world. Similar to the other languages that I've just mentioned, learning Punjabi allows you to deepen your understanding and rich culture and history. And then Urdu, closely related to Hindi, is the national language of Pakistan and an officially recognized language in several Indian states. Since Urdu is written in the Persian Arabic script, learning Urdu also offers a gateway to these other languages as well, or to other languages as well, rather. But no matter which language you decide to study, knowing one of these critical languages is going to set you apart to employers in both the public and private sectors due to the total number of speakers and their international relevance. While CLS does require a language minimum study for some of its programs, for some of its languages, this is not the case for any of the Indic languages offered. Students with no previous experience in the language are eligible to apply, as are those who have begun their language learning already, either through school, through self-study, or at home being heritage speakers. On our website, we have tips to help you determine what level you should apply to based on your experience, and there's a space in the application for you to describe your experience. All of the programs have had heritage speakers in the past, so we're also used to working with students who might be mixed in their language ability. For example, they might be an intermediate level at speaking, but they might not be able to read or write the script. Regardless of what level applicants select in their application, once CLS participants arrive in their host country, they take a placement test at the site, and then the cohort is further divided into smaller groups based on that assessment, so that when you're in classes, you're able to meet um, with teachers, with students at the relatively the same level and, and maximize the time you have for your learning gain, gains. I think it's important to keep in mind that the CLS program is more than just a funding opportunity. It's an all-inclusive study abroad program focused on immersive language learning. Each of our partner institutions host up to 30 CLS students and facilitates an intensive eight-week program for students that includes 20 hours of language study each week, cultural activities, local excursions, and at least one overnight weekend trip. Each, langu each language cohort size varies year to year, depending on how many people are interested in the language that year. The program is academically challenging and every aspect is de designed to maximize language gains and your immersion in the host country, which Sarah will talk a little bit about in just a moment. Throughout the summer, students agree to speak only in the target language they're studying, so in this case, Bangla, Punjabi, Hindu, Urdu. Um, for the beginning level students, there's about a two week grace period for this. But even so, students are encouraged to incorporate as much of the target language as they can into their classes and into their other program sessions. It can be a bit overwhelming at first, uh, especially for students that are beginning student level students, but the teachers, the language partners, and the host families that you generally stay with are all, are all experienced dealing with beginning students and provide a great support system. Each student is also assigned a language partner for practice outside of the classroom. So it, so it's very quick that students find themselves starting to really be able to have um, basic conversations and have the vocabulary they need to, to survive the day to day. Depending on the health and safety considerations, it may be necessary to hold some or all of the 2021 CLS institutes virtually. In that case, virtual instruction will happen in a similar manner emphasizing the use of language, cultural learning, and building relationships between our scholars and the people of the host country. During the in-person program, CLS students live with host families, and they agree, again, to speak exclusively in the target language with them. Most families have experience hosting Americans or other international students and are eager to share their home and their cultures. Past host families have had a variety of configurations. They can be comprised of a single retiree or several generations living under one roof. Students are asked to complete a questionnaire before the start of the program about their interests and preferences. And then our overseas partner uses that in their placement. Many students report that the host family experience is one of the most valuable of the program. Students typically take public transportation from their host family to the school each day. For the Indic programs, they generally have transportation provided to them to get to the school each day. And then afterwards in the afternoon, they are um, charged with getting home, though they are told how to get home and usually the first few days they're, they're sort of walked through the process or someone goes with them. Um, there's also an average of about 30 minutes or so in terms of that commute. 
Most students spend a significant portion of their time outside of the class with their host family and common activities for many of them are watching TV and movies, cooking or sharing a meal together, going walks around the neighborhood or celebrating events such as a birthday or a local festival. Sarah, can you talk a little bit about your host family experience? Yes, um, so my host family was super awesome um, and probably one of my favorite memories or one of my favorite parts of the whole program. And so I had a housemate, his name was Rob, um, and he was also on the Urdu program, but he was, um, I believe he was an advanced beginner where I was like a total beginner beginner. Um, and so that was really fun um, because we we're able to, you know, get to enjoy the family together. Um, but I know some people also will be living alone with a host family. So each experience will be different. Um, and so we had two little kiddos at our house, which for me, I absolutely loved. Um, and so I know that's one of the questions, you know, as you're going along in the application is, would you like to live with a host family with kids? And so both myself and Rob said yes. And I think that's probably how we were paired together as well. But um, yeah, so we would um, just always enjoy family dinners together. I think that was one of my most favorite parts or one of my favorite memories is just really eating together. And that's really the time when you get to start using your Urdu and what you're learning in the class and just listening and soaking it all up. Um, but then also we took excursions into town together, which was really fun. I remember going to the market with my host mom, um, you know, so it's just, it's a really great experience and um, really truly allows you to immerse yourself within the city as well as your neighborhood and get to know your neighbors and everything like that. So um, for me, definitely one of my favorite parts. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned having a housemate. Um, so for the Indic languages specifically, there is the possibility that in your host family, you would also be with one other CLS student. Um, that said, you would have your own bedroom and your own space where you could study. Um, and then as Sarah mentioned, you know, the family really is, a, it's a great resource, um, not only to, to learn the city um, and to understand the culture, but it's also just a great safety net for students um, to have people there that are looking out for you, that are making sure you're home at a certain time um, that are sort of just asking you how your day is going and constantly there. In addition to host families, each student is also paired with a language partner and they meet twice a week to practice their target language outside of the classroom. Language partners are predominantly local university students or young professional professionals with an interest in international exchange or for the Indic languages also with an interest in the target language. So example for the Urdu program, um, some of the language partners, not all, but some of them are, are getting their masters in Urdu and they're interested in, in eventually teaching. And so it's a great opportunity for them to spend time with foreigners um, and to sort of practice some of that as they show the city and, and sort of just exchange culture in general. Um, as much as possible, language partners are recruited from among uh, students and professionals with a variety of backgrounds and interests. And we try to take that into account when we're pairing them with the CLS participants. For this summer, students met online with their language partners to, uh, to take virtual tours of their houses in the US and Jaipur. It was a virtual Hindi program this summer. Uh, students and language partners also cooked together and shared recipes via Zoom. They watched movies as pairs. In the past, in our in-person programming, language partners have attended concerts together They've gone shopping and sightseeing around the city, and they've simply just spent time in cafes, chatting, um, asking each other's questions about life, just sort of hanging out, really. Sarah, what were some of the things that you did with your language partner? Yeah, so we did quite a variety of things. And, you know, I think, um, you know, with your language partners, there's a certain amount of time you have to meet per week. Um, so some students or some pairings will meet more, some will meet less, or not less, but some won't meet as often, um, just kind of meeting the basic criteria. So um, for my language partner and I, we got along super well. Um, so we went out to see a bunch of the different um, mosques within the community and just really said like, okay, like, Sarah, where do you want to visit? What's your bucket list um, in Lucknow? And then we kind of divided it out between the weeks and went out to the different areas. Sometimes we just went to go eat somewhere. Um, one time we went to her favorite cafe and just had cake. Um, and I would say definitely as a beginner in Urdu, it's like at the beginning, it's like, okay, like, you know, and you're really just talking the very basic, basic things. Um, but she was a really good teacher and we just had a lot of laughs along the way. And, um, you know, it's a really good way to utilize your time to get to see the city 
as well as to practice your language as well too. So um, yeah, definitely I really enjoyed my time with my language partner for sure. Yeah, and as Sarah mentioned, uh, as I said earlier, you are required in the program to meet with your language partner two times for one hour each time. You can't club them together or combine them. That said, we, we have found that in the virtual program and in the in-person program, language partners and students sometimes, or I would even say often, end up meeting longer than that um, because they do find ways to connect and they, they enjoy spending time together and, and learning from one another. For the Indic languages, um, historically we've been working with AIS, the American Institute of Indian Studies, and the language partners there tend to have done the, done the position for three, four, five years. So they're all individuals that have a lot of experience um, working with US students, but also they're, they're individuals that are they're passionate about it. They come back every summer because they wanna connect with students and share their culture. So in 2019, we had sites in the cities of Calcutta for Bangla, uh, in Jaipur for Hindi, in Chandigarh for Punjabi, and in Lucknow for Urdu. Sites for 2021 will be announced in the spring of 2021. It's important to keep in mind that you're applying for a language and not a specific program site or a country. Cultural programming and excursions in the past have included master classes in traditional music and dance, um, have included visiting local temples, visiting uh, craftsmen, having instructors, um, for example, like a sitar instructor come to the institute and give lessons. Each excursion is designed to help promote a better understanding of life in the host community. Um, this year's program included a virtual tour of a host mother's house and an interview with her family. It included a performance by a renowned sitar player. There was a fourth generation snake charmer that uh, came and talked to the students virtually and then had the snake um, dance for the students. And then there was also a guest lecture by an astrologer who came in. Sarah, were there any excursions or cultural activities that stood out to you in the Lucknow program? Um, yeah, for me, um, I really took the time to enjoy the cultural classes. So um, I did, I think I did way more than like the normal person would, but that's just because I love to do everything. So I did, I took a dance class, I took embroidery class. Um, what else? I took calligraphy class. I think those were my main three. Um, and typically students take one, I believe. So um, for me, that was a really great way. And yes, we did have the excursions, um, which were nice. So sometimes the vocabulary, at least like on the excursions that we had, was a bit more higher level. Um, and so it was good for us um, as beginners to just try and listen and see kind of what words and bits and pieces we could understand. Um, but definitely the sites were beautiful. And it's just nice to get outside of your, you know, your normal area to go see something new and learn about the city as well. Yeah, and I, we are planning for 2021 to have an in-person program, but we're not quite sure what's going to happen in the future. Um, and so I did want to just have this slide out here real quickly to show you some of the virtual program programming that we had this summer. Uh, on the left, you'll see a photo of a teacher who was in Jaipur talking to two of her students during a class. In the middle two, there are two of the cultural activities where we had a performance by a sitar instructor, as well as a snake charmer I mentioned. And on the right, there was another excursion uh, with a, usually uh, one of the host mothers just talking to students, answering a lot of the questions that I think students would have asked had they been on the in-person program about what life is like, about dinner, about house rules. Um, and she was kind enough to introduce us to her son and show us her garden. So as much as possible, we're trying to make all of the same connections that we can in the in-person program if there is a virtual program. So in addition to the opportunity to study abroad in the in-person program and to take language classes that are fully funded, um, there's a lot of other benefits that come with participating in the CLS program. Students in CLS make substantial gains in language proficiency over the course of one summer and proficiency in a critical language opens up doors to further academic and employment opportunities in all fields. Studying abroad can help develop and hone your skills uh, that our employers are looking for, such as problem solving, flexibility, adaptability, and all of these things will help you stand out to employers and give you an edge in an increasingly competitive and globalized job market. 
Because of the immersive nature of the CLS program, participants also have a unique opportunity to build meaningful relations, relationships with their host communities, um, with friends that they meet there, uh, with colleagues in the host country, and with peers in their CLS cohort, all of who, who come from all over the United States. Alumni in the program join a vibrant and engaged community of US Department of State International Exchange alumni and gain access to resources and events supported by the CLS program. Uh, additionally, while the CLS program and it, the participation in the program doesn't have any sort of service commitment to the United States government after you complete the program, alumni do receive a certificate of non-competitive eligibility for federal employment if they wish to use that. The CLS application is available online now at clscholarship.org slash apply. In order to prepare a competitive application, we recommend starting early and reaching out to resources on your campus for help. The application deadline is November 17th, 2020 at 8 p.m. Eastern time. That's 5 p.m. Pacific time. You may only apply for one language and please keep in mind that you're applying for a language rather than a specific program site or country. Applicants are required to submit an unofficial transcript and only one letter of recommendation. And in terms of what the application has, it's essentially four short essays and a statement of purpose that form the core of the application. So um, before I talk a little bit about some points that might help you to succeed on the application, and then we open it up to q and A. I I'd just like to give Sarah the opportunity to, to speak a little bit more about her experiences on the program um, and any, any thoughts you would like to share. Awesome. Yeah, so definitely it's an experience of a lifetime. And, you know, I feel like, um, so I've studied abroad before, but normally for longer periods of time, like for a year or um, something like that. So to have this program be around two-ish, two and a half months, um, it really is a lot packed into that amount of time. And I always told the students like that were on, or maybe they were leaving the U.S. for the first time. You know, I always let them know, I said, the two and a half months, two-ish months, it's going to go by really fast. And you have to make the most of your time while you're there and while you have it. So, um, you know, a lot of times it's good to have your ideas about what you want to accomplish and what your goals are. And the CLS, um, you know, people, you do that in the preparation, um, you know, in Washington, D.C., you kind of go through what are your goals and what do you want to do while you're there and what are your language goals and what are you hoping to accomplish from the program? And I think that reflection piece is really important to making sure that your time there is successful and by successful, I mean, what it means to be successful to you. Um, and so really, there's just so many opportunities, you know, you're learning inside the classroom, you have your host family at home, you're getting to learn the, in the community and talk to people. Um, you know, so there's so many different ways to immerse yourself in the culture. Also, while sometimes you don't even notice you're learning the language, right? Because it just, it happens naturally and organic when you're out in the community, which I think is one of the best parts of the program. And it really helps you to learn and solidify your language skills for sure. Um, definitely, I would say some of my highlights. Um, so we had a coffee shop that we went to study at almost every single day. Um, so they really became like family and we got to know each other and, um, you know, we were going through our flashcards and they would say, what is this in English? And um, so it was just a really fun way to get to, you know, interact with local business people, but then also to get to know the people in your community as well. Um, lots of fun markets to go to, lots of amazing food as to be expected. Um, so definitely did not disappoint. And, you know, I really think it's an opportunity of a lifetime and, you know, if you have questions, you know, we're always going to be here to answer. Um, but yeah, definitely, I would say go for it. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. And just, you know, put your application in. Um, and hopefully, you know, if you're chosen, definitely just make the most of the time you have, especially, you know, with these international and immersive experiences, it's time that you never get back. And it's memories that will last a lifetime. Yeah. And I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned, um, being successful in terms of what success means for you. Because one thing that we do try to stress is that successful applicants for the CLS program really do come from a wide range of backgrounds and they're ex expected to represent the diversity of the United States abroad. You know, the program places an emphasis on students who are prepared for the rigorous academics of the program, 
and also for the intensive nature of the program. So often students will ask, like, can I do other research? Can I do volunteer opportunities? And while those are all really great goals, there just isn't time. There's so much focus on learning the language within eight weeks. Students can get up to two semesters or two, two terms basically of learning that language. So a lot of your focus is really just going into, going into studying, going to classes, spending time with your language partner. In terms of your application, it's important to show that you can succeed on the CLS program. Uh, that includes addressing your ability to study intensively, your skills at adapting to a group program setting where you're not always gonna be making the same decisions or, or rather you're not gonna be making all the decisions and your cultural flexibility and maturity. You should show that you're motivated to pursue language study and that you'll continue your studies after you return to the United States. This doesn't mean that your campus has to offer the course in the language that you choose. So for example, you know, if you're supposed to show that you want to do the Urdu program and then you want to continue learning Urdu, you don't have to, to say, I'm going to take Urdu when I get back to my university because we understand that not all universities have an Urdu program. Um, but you should still demonstrate in your application what it is that you're going to do, what is your future plan so that you can continue to grow in the language. And finally, you need to make a clear connection between the language that you wish to study and your academic and professional goals. The one, the one point I'll make here is, um, you know, you really, you really have to spend time thinking about the language that you are applying for. And when you're looking at your essays, I think it's important to, to make sure that you aren't just inputting a different language and the application makes the same amount of sense, right? Like every language is different. Your goals are different and so really make those connections um, but and Sarah as someone that was a finalist and made it do you have any tips or suggestions on the application yeah so um, I think one of the biggest things is really knowing your purpose and I, I've said this example before but I think it is really important so if you ask yourself why five times so if I say I want to apply to the Ur Urdu program but why and they say, oh, well, I want to apply so I can use it when I talk to international students when I'm traveling in Pakistan and India, but why? So I think if you ask yourself why five times, it really gets you to the heart of like why you want to apply. And you can use that as your motivation, your application. And I think, um, you know, whether you're passionate about writing or not writing, right, regardless, you're still going to have to write in the application. So I think if you're struggling with the content of it, it's really good to just take a moment, step back and kind of reflect on what is my purpose and why is it this specific language that I want and how am I gonna be able to use it in the future? And you really have to understand that bigger picture or even if not, like what are some goals that you think you may wanna use? So it doesn't mean um, if I say, oh, I'm gonna apply for the foreign service exam, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that that has to come true you know, 10 years later. Um, it's just the idea and the thought in the moment, but really you have to have something tangible to tie it to. So I would just say, as you're going along with the application, just make it known that, you know, if you're struggling with the content and if you would read it and say, oh, well, I don't think this person, you know, is as passionate or really has that connection to the language, like the person reading it probably won't either. So I would just say take a minute and really start to do that reflection piece before you start the application because that'll make sure your application is coherent all the way through. And then the other thing I would say is there's a lot of different questions on the application. Um, so you can really take the, um, how should I say, you can really prioritize and make sure that you're in, like you're able to pocket all the different areas of why you want to apply in each specific question. So rather than saying, I want to go to India so that way I can talk with students in the future for every single question, right? That's just going to get repetitive. So it's really important that you use your words wisely um, and make the most of the space that you have available because there will be word counts, right? So um, it will be important that you're strategic in how you use your words um, in order to make the most impact for the person who will be reading it. Yeah, and if you go to the CLS website, there are um, sections on the website that, that try to make it clear exactly what it is that we're looking for. You can go to our YouTube channel. There's a tips video, again, that tries to make it very clear what it is that each question is really asking. Um, we fully recommend, we encourage students to write drafts of their essays and then show them to faculty, show them to your writing center, or fellowship office at your school, really just anyone else to get an outside opinion. Uh, and as Sarah was saying, you know, see if they can find that connection, if it's clear for them as it is for you.
So again, the application is open now and it's available online at clsscholarship.org slash apply. The application must be submitted no later than 5 p.m. Pacific time or 8 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, November 17th. I say this explicitly because every year we have students who try to submit their application at the very last minute and they miss the deadline. So please don't let this be you. In January, every applicant will be notified on whether or not they've advanced to the semifinal round of selection. This notification is done by email, so make sure you include a valid email address in your application and check your spam filters. There's nothing that you have to do between that first round of selection and the final round of selection. It's just us letting you know whether or not you've advanced. So there's no other information, essays, transcripts, anything that you have to submit afterwards. So thank you again for taking time to join us this afternoon. We'll be going through questions in the order that they've come in through the Q&A window or potentially through the chat. I've seen um, some, uh, I think mostly through the Q&A. Um, but we also want to point out that there's context for